Some people have busy schedules and have to balance the gym with work and family life. Others just don't want to spend very long in the gym because they'd rather do other stuff, which is also fine. Both are equally valid reasons to ask the question, how should you train if you don't have much time? I'm gonna give you some tips and then at the end, I'll go through an example. First, where you can, choose compound exercises that best work the synergist muscle. So for your pulling exercises, for example, of course, back muscles are gonna be the prime movers, but some of those exercises will provide better bicep activation than others. And it's these you should choose when you're on a time constraint because the time you have to hit those muscles like the biceps with isolation exercises is probably going to be limited. Another example would be a parallel bar tricep dip over a decline bench press. Second, choose exercises that don't need much setup. I am a big fan of Bulgarian split squats, maybe their biggest fan, but I wouldn't recommend them if you're on a time constraint because they have such a complex setup with your bench, rack and plates that it's just gonna eat into the time that you can actually spend doing your sets. Now, as a side note, unilateral exercises generally, where you do one side at a time, are also probably gonna be out the window. For my squat or lunge type movement, I'd probably go for a leg press or a hack squat machine because you can just throw plates on and get going. Third, choose exercises that have lower cardiovascular demand. So think about those split squats again, or even walking lunges or barbell back squats. These are exercises that have you gassing after a tough set, or maybe that's just me, but that's because you actually expend a lot of energy bracing your core and stabilizing the weight. And whilst this is still exercise, right, it contributes to you feeling tired and fatigued, it's not directly contributing to growing muscle, which is what we care about. And it also means that you have to take longer rest periods before you're ready for your next set. And the same goes for something like a standing T-bar row or even a bent over barbell row where there's a lot of core bracing and stability involved. In these instances, as in many instances for time constrained training, plate loaded machines are your friend. Maybe your best friend, nah, I'm your best friend. Maybe they're your second best friend. Lastly, if you're really tight on time, you might need to think about which exercises you can omit altogether. Again, if you follow me, you know I love a good overhead press and I think it's essential for any routine under normal circumstances, but I don't think it's as essential as a lateral raise, for example. Is that, does that make sense? As essential, are there different degrees of essentialness or is it just essential or not essential? I'm not sure if that's nonsense, it might be. Anyway, I think that because your front delts are virtually impossible to separate from your chest, so they are already getting a lot of work from your chest exercises. Now, overhead presses are also no better than bench press for your triceps, so it's really only your side delts that they're needed for, which you could hit just as well, but for a much smaller time and fatigue cost with a lateral raise machine or a cable lateral raise. Why do we rest in between sets? It's to allow some kind of recovery, both from general fatigue, cardiovascular, etc., and local fatigue, so the actual muscle being trained. But with some exercises, the general fatigue is minimal. Think about a cable curl, for example. It's only really local fatigue. Your biceps might need a rest, but otherwise, you could jump straight into another set. So there's no real reason that you couldn't superset your cable curls with some tricep extensions. And in these cases, it's probably a really good time-saving idea. I would stick to low fatigue, isolation movements and antagonistic muscle groups. You could superset curls with tricep extensions or maybe pec deck with reverse pec deck, maybe even pushing it, leg extensions with leg curls. I have tried supersetting things like biceps with calves, but I don't know, something about it just doesn't feel right to me. Maybe all of your blood being in your arms affects your ability to then work the muscle literally at the other end of your body or Maybe I'm just exposing my rudimentary knowledge of anatomy there, so that might be embarrassing. Now, I'm not a fan of supersets that work the same muscle group. I think a better alternative to that is just a drop set or some rest pause sets sticking to the one exercise. So whilst we're here, we should probably mention those as well. But just a brief explanation first. There are two main ways you build muscle, and one is by 
putting the muscle under high levels of tension by using heavier weights. So think about your lower rep sets where you fail because you can't lift the weight anymore. The other is a result of that burning sensation that you get with higher rep sets. So clever people who do science and stuff call it metabolic stress because it comes from the buildup of metabolites in your muscles, right? Now by doing things like drop sets or rest pause sets, in a short period of time, you can induce high levels of metabolic stress. So it's a quick way to get a lot of muscle building stimulus in. I would therefore say that these are a no brainer for anyone training on a time constraint and they might even be worthwhile if you're not. An example might be performing some lateral raises until your shoulders are burning, taking 10 seconds to let that sensation dissipate and then going again for another five reps and you could repeat that a few times. Apart from anything else, the pump you experience off these is literally unmatched so it's probably worth doing it on its own. Now, due to how your muscles tire, this probably is not an appropriate technique for those exercises that are focused more on mechanical tension, so your heavier, lower rep work. Although, if it was your final set and you didn't have to think about preserving performance, then there's probably no reason that you couldn't do that as well, providing it's a safe exercise. Now, if you're generally pushed for time, this might not be much use. However, maybe you've got an exercise bike or a treadmill at home and it's just actual time in the gym that you're limited on. So in that case, improving your cardio might help you to build more muscle very indirectly, but because it will enable you to recover better between your sets. And now this would therefore obviously allow you to take shorter rest periods without sacrificing your performance in those sets. You might think lower reps make sense because your sets shouldn't take as long, but for exercises that are at that end of the strength endurance continuum, you usually need longer rest periods anyway, so it swings and roundabouts really. I also think that it would be inadvisable to neglect that lower rep work, so your aim should still be to fit a variety of rep ranges in somewhere in your training. One thing that will make a difference is regulating your intensity, so how hard each set is. In the case of your heavier compound exercises, it's probably better to be stopping a couple of reps away from failure than it is to get really close to failing or actually failing. Now, you might think, I don't have much time, so I should smash every set. But if you fail or almost fail on every set, then either your strength will drop off a cliff for subsequent sets or you'll need far longer rest periods to avoid that happening because the fatigue cost of going to failure rather than stopping couple of reps short is so great and at that point it's probably not worth the benefit. Pacing yourself better might actually mean that you can rest a little less and actually fit another set in which will be far more beneficial. Okay let's run through a basic example of a full body workout. So let's say you wanted to hit some chest, back, a bit of legs and some arms. I'd start with four straight sets of a plate loaded chest press. You can just throw plates on, there's no wandering around looking for dumbbells or clips and you're not expending much energy stabilizing the weight. So you can rest less than with a traditional bench press. It's all just going straight into the press, right? Smith machine would also tick these boxes. For that, I'd probably go to failure on the final set only. I'd then go to some neutral grip pull-ups. Again, zero setup time for this exercise. These will need a couple of minutes rest period, so I'd just stick to three straight sets. Now, again, you might as well hit failure on the final set, but not before. I'd then finish lats off with a quick drop set on the lat prayer, or sometimes called a stiff arm pull down. These are super quick to smash through and your lats should be toast following that drop set. Is that a thing? Lats, toast. You know what I'm getting at. Next, I would superset some leg extensions with leg curls. Now, you can take very short rest periods between each if you want, but supersetting will still enable you to get through them much faster. I'd probably do two straight sets for each, pretty high rep, 12 to 15 kind of range. On the third set, I'd do some rest pause reps. So, do your extensions on, until the burn is unbearable, wait five to 10 seconds, do another few reps and then repeat that a few times and do the same for your final set of leg curls. I would then do something similar for biceps and triceps with some cable rope curls and overhead extensions just because these are probably the quickest to superset between. Again, two straight sets followed by a big rest pause pump set. I'd say you should be able to get this workout done in about 40 to 45 minutes with adequate rest periods. Of course, that would have to be one workout within the context of your training week. You haven't hit 
all muscles there. But you could do something similar and cover the other muscle groups in another couple of similar length sessions. Now, that's just a rough example. You could probably improve on it if you wanted to give it a bit of thought and really analyze it. The final point I really wanna make though is this. You might look at that routine or of some of the recommendations I've given it and think, well, that's not 100% optimal for gains, right? Of course it's not, because that's called compromise, right? We're always doing that with training to some extent. There's always some kind of compromise, but what everybody should realize and what I do try to at least make a constant theme on this channel and in my videos is that what matters is the long-term repetition of fundamental principles. Lift weights, increase demand, read, stimulus, adapt, repeat, right? Sure, if you compare a barbell bench press to a Smith machine bench press, then the former might be better, right? In a lot of metrics. But when you compare them both relative to doing nothing, the difference appears much smaller. In essence, what I'm trying to say is, if you are pushed for time and you have to limit your workouts, then you can still do the basics and you can still get in great shape. It is an obstacle to navigate rather than a barrier. You just might need to be a bit more methodical and a bit more intentional about how you train. Right, I hope that was helpful. If it was, subscribe to me shit, because like 60% of you aren't subscribed, which is actually a good thing because it means that I'm getting like new people watching me shit, but it's also a bad thing because I'm offended massively. See you later. Jordan Lenny is my hero.